mobile direction equipment for the Jupiter missile is transported to a predetermined launch site on a two and a half ton erector truck and a launcher on its transporter. The launcher trailer is uncoupled from truck at the site, which should be reasonably level and firm with ample clearance for missile erection and equipment handling. Correct launcher towing position is indicated when two marks on the chassis form a vertical line. Four locking arms, one at each leg of the launcher, are released by removing self-lock pins and pulled back from the ring before the launcher is lowered to the ground. Before the launcher can be lowered, the transporter hydraulic system is relieved by operating four hand valves. Primarily, the purpose of the launcher is to support the missile and provide a means of missile rotation for azimuth alignment. Levers on the transporter chassis control hydraulic raised lower cylinders near each wheel. Clamp bolts are removed after loosening their retaining nuts and the clamp freed from around each end of the axle. After the axle assembly is disconnected, it's rolled back a short distance from the launcher. The launcher transporter unit is typical of the simplicity of the Jupiter mobile direction system. Each step is logical and very few tools are needed. As the launcher is now supported by its four legs, the transporter is moved out and away. Two small, permanently attached wheels on the rear of the transporter allow the chassis to roll over the deflector. These small wheels are used only during this operation. The rear axle assembly is being mated to the transporter to enable towing from the launch area. The rear axle arms are actuated by manually operated hand pumps. Clamping surfaces are machined to assure accuracy of alignment. After the wheels are secured, the hydraulic jacks will raise the chassis to proper towing position. The wheels are secured to the axle by the clamp bolt. Since the launcher transporter has served its purpose, crew members can roll it a short distance from the vicinity of the launcher. The small number of components, simplicity of operation, and ease of handling characterizes tactical system. At each leg of the launcher, a manually operated screw jack rests on a ball-jointed footplate for good footing. The jack is operated by a ratchet and handle inserted between the leg and protective shield. Turnbuckles provide bracing for the launcher for stability due to soil conditions and to counteract wind loads during standby. Two spirit levels located 90 degrees apart and protected from heat and blast are attached to the launcher body to indicate when the launcher is in a level plane. The four jack assemblies are bolted to the launcher body for supporting and leveling. The hydraulic arrestor is in position. A small wire rope wrapped around the snubber assembly is unwound to free the arrestor. A redesign has now eliminated this positioner from later tactical units. The hydraulic unit itself is carried on the erector truck at the rear center. Inside the unit is a hydraulic pump driven by an electric motor. All operating controls are located on a panel protected by a hinged cover. For safety, hydraulic pressure can be built up and maintained with a hand pump in the event of power failure. A pump handle is stowed in the hose compartment at the rear of the unit and screws into the pump plunger casting. The erector truck is a modified two and a half ton M46. A carefully planned packaging arrangement facilitates loading or unloading. First step in A-frame assembly is to remove the two lower sections. These lower sections are stowed inside sections of the H-frame. The sections are lifted over the launcher and positioned for mating with the trunnions. Large pins hold the sections in place and become pivot points. When both lower sections of the A-frame are in place, the center sections are unloaded from inside H-frame sections. Sections of the frame are joined at machined slip joints. Because of fairly close tolerances, an approximate alignment has to be accomplished before the joints will slip together. Self-locking pins hold all sections in place. The upper section is now attached to the center sections. For transporting to the launch site, both A and H frame components are held in place on the truck by nylon straps. Tubular steel construction keeps weight to a minimum. Wide use is made of the self-locking pins. 
For H-frame assembly, the erector truck has been driven to the other side of the launcher. There are three pairs of support jacks. The jacks support and align the H-frame during the assembly and erection sequence. The H-frame consists of four end sections and four center sections. A number one section is unloaded from the truck and its trunnion mated with one of the launcher's H-frame brackets. It is secured with a pivot pin. Work proceeds from launcher to truck. Another number one section is unloaded from the erector truck and mated with the other bracket and pin. The H-frame provides stability between truck and launcher during missile erection. Also, it may be used as an interim method to position and support a servicing platform after the missile is erected. A number two section is unloaded. All sub-assemblies of the frame have reasonable weight and good balance for ease of handling. Spreaders placed at section ends keep the frame parallel and maintain stability. The other number two section is lifted from the erector truck. Both number one sections will now be held parallel by a spreader and supported by jacks. Crew members hold each section in a horizontal plane and in a parallel line until the spreaders and jacks are attached. Another spreader is placed in position. This is the one in the middle of the H-frame. The three spreaders are identical. Continuing from launcher to truck, a number three section is transferred from the vehicle. Crew members carefully avoid the use of unnecessary force when any of the sections are mated. All slip joints are kept free of mars, burrs, and corrosion. Before and after each emplacement, the slip joints should be cleaned and a light film of lubricant applied. Sludge formation should be removed with dry cleaning solvent. Self-locking pins hold the H-frame sections together. As soon as all spreaders and jacks are in place, a number four section is taken off the truck. The truck is driven away from the launcher as the sections are lifted off. These self-locking pins used throughout the system are a patented commercial item that use small hardened balls as a locking feature. The remaining H-frame section is brought to the assembly point. When both end sections are mated with the center sections, they are held horizontally until attached to the truck. Minor maneuvering of the H-frame prevents damage during mating with the vehicle. All sections of the H-frame have now been fitted together. Before continuing, a final check is made to see that all joints have been pinned. By ratchet adjustment of the support jacks, the end section trunnion is raised to couple with the truck. Truck driver and crew maintain close liaison while backing the truck in a straight line to the H-frame. The truck moves slowly to prevent damage to the mating surfaces of the frame or possible frame distortion on impact. Mating is fairly easy when the vehicle and H-frame are in a straight line. After a pin is started by hand, it's driven through the trunnion bracket by a sledgehammer. Attachment is identical for both end sections. Rather large pins are used at this key point because of the stresses encountered. Two cable supports for the tension cables are placed on the H-frame near the center spreader. A shackle on each side of a top plate is furnished for cable attachment. These supports are free to pivot and are held in place by self-locking pins. Shackles are removed from the support plate and the cable is inserted in each one. The tension cable is now lying along the top of the H-frame from the truck to the cable support and toward the launcher ring. A load binder on the H-frame near the truck anchors and tightens the tension cable. The other cable end is anchored on the H-frame near the launcher trunnion. Thus, upward movement of the H-frame is counteracted. A missile support stand is transported to the launch site strapped to the bed of the erector truck. Two legs on each end of the stand are folded together, thereby reducing space requirements while on the truck. Its cradle is padded with rubber to prevent damage to the missile. A side bracket is hinged on either end of the support stand to let it swing down and across to another leg. The legs are set apart an approximate distance and the side brace dropped down. The braces are pinned to their brackets. 
Installing the two front braces is a similar operation. When all four braces are in place, the stand will easily support the weight of the missile. Even if heavy gloves are worn during frigid weather conditions, pinning is still comparatively easy. Rigging of the wire rope system begins as the ends of the anchor cable are shackled to lugs welded to the erector truck bed. A hand-operated free spooling lever on the side of the winch is disengaged. The erection cable is pulled from the winch drum along the top of the spreader bars and the H-frame to the three-part pulley block at the apex of the A-frame. Care is taken during this part of the operation to keep the cable free of the ground, thereby eliminating any possibility of picking up dirt or grip. These foreign substances can shorten the life of the cable by their abrasive action. The cable is slipped onto the pulley and brought back to and reeved around the pulley of the stationary block. The wire rope system is a refined version of a block and tackle arrangement. Standard operating procedure is to wear gloves when handling stranded wire rope. Unscrewing a retained bolt on the stationary block lets the hinged side plates swing back. The anchor cable loop goes around the small spool and the winch cable around the large pulley. An A and H frame erector is raised for leverage during initial lifting of the A and H frame. The top of the erector supports the anchor and winch cables. Also, the erector prevents cable fouling and possible damage to strands of the wire ropes. In addition to the three-part block, an equalizer assembly is fastened to the top end of the A-frame. Erecting slings are attached to the equalizer cable. Rigging of the wire rope system has been completed except for positioning cables. In conjunction with the winch, the system provides all mechanical power necessary for missile erection. As the winch drum is revolved by the erector truck transmission power takeoff, the winch rope tightens erecting the A-frame. For convenience, the A-frame was assembled and rigged while the frame was horizontal. Now the A-frame is erected to a safe angle before the two positioning cables are attached. Load capacity of the winch is 20,000 pounds. Wire rope speed is variable from approximately 15 to 26 feet per minute. One end of each positioning cable is attached to the H-frame and the opposite end of the A-frame. These cables keep the A-frame from contacting the auxiliary ring or attached firing accessories. Hand signals tell the winch operator when the A-frame is inclined the maximum permitted by the cables. The erector is used only during erection of the A or H-frame. A hydraulic hose is carried in the rear compartment of the hydraulic unit. This flexible hose transmits hydraulic fluid from the cart the snubber cylinder on the launcher. A connector at the top end of the snubber cylinder accepts a flexible hose. Careful insertion and proper tightening will guarantee a leak-proof connection. The other end of the hydraulic hose is attached to the pressure outlet on the front of the hydraulic unit, which is protected by a dust cover. Reasonable care is taken to avoid cross-threading. When properly tightened, a leak-proof connection exists between hydraulic unit and snubber cylinder. Rolling the cart from the launcher helps clear the ring area for missile erecting activities. The cart will be left here. A cable from the power distribution trailer furnishes electric power to the pump motor. The power input connector is on the front of the hydraulic unit. Located on the top panel is a toggle switch to start the pump motor. Next, the raised lower control is placed in the raised position and the forked cylinder ram begins to raise. Hydraulic pressure extends the ram. A bracket on the missile's auxiliary ring will engage the fork and slowly lower the missile. Panel controls are power switch, raised lower flow control valve, pressure gauge and valve. Now the missile transporter is back to engage the pivots of the auxiliary ring with trunnions on the launcher. 
Close coordination with the transporter driver is essential while backing to avoid damaging the pivot points or launcher. A portable switch box controls hydraulic actuators on the transporter to steer its rear wheels. By using portable hand controls, the missile can be inched up or down, forward or back. Precise control of the rear wheel steering is now in the hands of an operator with a portable switch. The transporter driver keeps backing steadily toward the launcher. Here again is a portable switch that controls steering of the transporter's rear wheels. Indicator lamps are lettered right, left, and neutral. The operator has on-the-spot control. From the receipt, inspection, and maintenance building to launch site, four tie-down arms hold the missile in place. They extend from transportation bolts to transporter. These tie-down arms are pivoted to the transporter and are raised hydraulically once the tie-downs are unlocked. A hydraulic switch on the transporter is marked up-down. This switch or lever activates the transporter's hydraulic system. After the actuation of the hydraulic lever, the missile can be raised or lowered by a portable switch which pivots the arms. The last few inches of travel are the most critical. Up-down movement is controlled by the portable switch. The portable switch operator can assume a vantage point close to the launching ring at an angle that gives the best view. Close coordination is essential now between three crew members. One crew member operates a portable raised lower switch and wheel switch. A second drives a transporter and a third directs. Slowly and surely, the mating is completed. Next, a pin is inserted through one of the trunnions. When the pin is pushed all the way home, a special fastener will hold it in place. This is a safety feature that prevents possible damage to an expensive weapon that could occur if the pin should accidentally work loose. The ease with which the pinning is accomplished depends largely on the positioning of the auxiliary ring with the launcher. As might be expected, the pin on the second trunnion may be more difficult. A close tolerance is required at the pivot for missile stability. It may become necessary to drive one of the pins through. Hold down arms extend from missile bolts to transporter at the aft cradle. When the safety locks are removed from the arms, the missile will be free to pivot toward the launcher since the forward arms were released earlier. Erecting slings run from the A-frame equalizer pulley to erecting bolts. Each sling is made up of wire rope with a keyhole plate that slips over the bolt. Power from the winch is applied to the A-frame. As the A-frame erection proceeds, the erecting slings are drawn tightly from the A-frame equalizing pulley to the erecting bolts. Release cables run from bolts to ground. The lifting action on the forward end of the missile continues until all weight is off the transporter. The missile support stand has been completely assembled and left near the erector truck. Now it's carried from the truck along the H-frame past the launcher, along the side of the missile transporter, and then placed near the front of the missile at a point near the forward erecting bolts. The stand supports the missile during horizontal checkout, warhead assembly, horizontal maintenance, or troubleshooting. Through the wire rope system, the A-frame is again pulled back and the forward end of the missile begins to raise. The missile transporter has served its purpose and may be driven from under the missile. Erecting slings reach from the erecting bolts on the missile to the A-frame equalizing pulley. Engine-driven winch power has been applied to the A-frame, pivoting the missile on the launcher clear of the transporter. Correct position of the support stand is marked on the missile directly under the erecting bolts. This was also a supporting point in the cradle of the transporter. If the emplacement were for an actual firing, warhead attachment or horizontal checkout would begin immediately after the missile is placed on the support stand. When horizontal for any period of time, the missile is at rest on the stand. A final check at the launcher and the system is ready. Erection of the missile begins. 
At the erector truck, the winch drum free spooling lever has been engaged. The operator has depressed the vehicle clutch, placed the truck transfer lever in neutral, and engaged the winch power control lever. The transmission gear shift is in, one of the lower gears and the clutch engaged. Speed of erection is carefully controlled. At the approximate halfway mark, the A and H frame form an angle of about 45 degrees. The angle between the A-frame and missile is always about 90 degrees. At the three-quarter point, the winch operator slows the spooling end of the wire rope as the center of gravity approaches a balance. Just before this balance point is reached, the snubber cylinder piston fork will engage a bracket on the missile's auxiliary ring. A mobile erection system such as this is a practical answer to the problems encountered in the tactical use of a missile the size and scope of a Jupiter. The winch operator stops the winch when the missile weight is on the fork of the hydraulic cylinder. The missile is slowly lowered by the hydraulic cylinder to a vertical position at a rate determined by the setting of the flow control valve which bleeds hydraulic fluid from the snubber cylinder. The Jupiter missile is erected. The A-frame is parallel to and above the H-frame, but the erecting slings, if left in their present position, would prevent missile rotation. These slings are first detached from the equalizer wire rope at the top section of the A-frame. Then the shackles are repinned to prevent loss. Each erecting sling is free at the lower end. The opposite end of each sling is suspended from the erecting bolt on the thrust unit. A small release cable is part of the sling assembly. The missile end of the sling is permanently fitted with a keyhole plate. Pulling on the release cable from the ground raises the plate, which then slips off the erection bolt quickly and easily. A crew member feeds the release cable through the groove and the sling is lowered. Damage to the missile is prevented by controlling the release cable's rate of descent. This tactical concept of the Jupiter mobile erection equipment is characterized by simplicity of design and ease of handling. The system is completely mobile. All parts are basic and assembly is rapid.